The theme is quite simple, it's that lots of tiny little interactions often contribute to extraordinary moments. We were told to live by a very strict set of, all of us, like we were probably of like the last generation of folks that were told to, you know, go to university and, you know, study really hard and get a really, get a good degree from the best school we could get into and then maybe get a second degree and then, you know, then you work and you buy a house and you buy a car and you get married and you have kids and, you know, you save in your 401k and blah, blah, blah. And now you have an entire generation of people who, it's not that they don't value that, it's that, that they've realized that social capital comes from a completely different set of things that aren't defined by those things. And I think that's, uh, you know, when we look at that and we look at that kind of confused and we don't really quite understand it, but in many ways they've kind of like have the courage now to unshackle themselves from a very traditional sense of living their life and are moving to a new way of living their life. And, and they get social capital for their new way of life through p places like Facebook and Twitter and all of these other things. And so you're rewiring our historical definitions of values. If you have 50,000 followers on Twitter, you're more important than a person that got you know, a dual PhD from Johns Hopkins and Cornell. That, I think that that's really good because that person otherwise would have stumbled and bumbled forward and now that person is like you know, running the Fed. <laughs> and now you know, what that'll show is just that there were always many people who had the potential but we had artificial barriers that just prevented those people from getting to the top. Like you're going to find some really amazing 16-year-old girl in Bangladesh who can just crush. And whereas before she lived in a world where she's married off and she has kids and she's told to shut up, mm -hmm. now doesn't have to. You know, in an educational sense, it's like I tell people, like, you can spend all your time like going to school and getting a degree or you can just go to Treehouse and learn to code and you know, get a job and you may be the person that creates the next great website that drives all this interesting change in the world. And people will then anoint you as a leader of people. Mm -hmm. And it'll be completely independent of all these other historical definitions of what define leadership potential. And what if they then generate all the wealth and create all the value and have all these people working for them? Well then, the power center sits there. It doesn't sit in the United States and all of these institutions that we've built up to be these, you know, precursors to power. And so then the, the entire world order gets changed and rewritten. And so what does that mean for like how we've thought about governing and you know businesses and capitalism and all this stuff? So in many ways, like we're we're like, you know, we're we're built on very shaky foundation right now. And so I'm I think you know blowing some of those underlying foundations up and seeing what happens. There'll be a lot of rubble, but I think there'll be a lot of interesting things that happen too. The definitions of social capital in society are changing. And I think the biggest business opportunities are driving change in those really big pillars that today define social capital. And I define those big pillars as healthcare, education, and financial services. Live as long as you can, have the skills to earn money, and then have access to money. Those are the three, in my opinion, new Maslow's hierarchy of needs that people give a shit about. And so finding ways of reconstructing any business in any of those three areas is, should be the primary focus of very capable people who are trying to both you know, move the world forward and make a ton of money. Simply put, those are trillion dollar markets that are completely fucked up that are ripe, ripe to be disrupted. We're seeing the beginnings of what I think is a sea change. Okay. Like, you know, look, in the last like eight or nine years, there was like 1,040, 1,040 discrete venture funded photo apps. What I have a problem with is like, what is a 731st guy thinking? <laughs> what is that guy thinking? A billion dollars of capital. I mean, Jesus Christ, like, you probably could have solved breast cancer if we basically said to folks, hey, I've assembled the A-team of data analysts. I've sequenced 15,000 women who express BRCA1, BRCA2, and I've machine learned these massive indicators of both women who will, women who won't, who both express the gene. We can give that to Roche, and let's develop a drug candidate. I bet you with a billion dollars I could solve that problem. But instead, I got to deal with these people that, you know. So I think it's like you, got, you have to be able to say that to people honestly because otherwise you know people won't take notice and make a personal decision when they get to that fork in the road and I've been really vocal about it because the good news is there's a lot of folks and most of my network is st strung between you know a lot of Facebook centric but the great news is you leave a company like that we were taught to be mission focused and impact focused and when you leave a company like that the good news is you've been conditioned by Zuck to want to do something like that again and so it's easy for me to be able to pull that person in because I can convince them with 
with my rhetoric. I mean, and it, at the end of the day, it is rhetoric. It's my sales pitch. But, uh, and it's because I believe in that. And I, and I think that if, if we could do that, we would be doing what we did 20 or 30 years ago. Like, the, what is the equivalent of us developing the mouse or the UI? What is the equivalent of that in 2013? I don't think it's what we're doing today. Yeah. It has to be that we're like, oh, this cool data scientist helped figure out this crazy thing in healthcare. That person rewrote education. This other person enabled you know, financial services to the mass. I mean, that is the equivalent. I invest a lot in technology. Um, but whenever every dollar that isn't in tech, I actually invest in one of three things. Entertainment, sports, and hospitality. And the reason is because I think those things are now taking a primary role, an increasingly primary role in people's lives because it accentuates their online life. So very simply put, um, people aren't buying houses anywhere near as often as they did. Rental rates are like this. Ownership rates are like that. People are you know, not buying cars as often. They're using things like Uber, public transportation. So they're generating. So individuals have tons of free cash flow. And so mm. what are they doing with that free cash flow? Well, they're allocating it in ways that allow mm. them to create experiences iPhones. iPhones, take a picture, do this. I get social capital because I post my thing from Burning Man. And so that's the vicious cycle we're in. If you want to make a ton of money, you know, the, 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 the services that benefit from that trend, you know, the online services are obvious. Facebook, Twitter, Yelp, you know, and then buy a restaurant chain. I mean, literally, you know, because I love hospitality. Just because I think it's re it, that's where people want intimacy, mm. you know. And then they want to then take, take that intimacy and then get rewarded for it online. And so it's things that allow them to be in a moment that are interesting and experiential that they can then capture and put into a box and define in a Vine and an Instagram and a photo and then come over here. This is, again, how social capital has changed. There's a, there's, I think there's an entire class of people younger than us who are not part of this whole conversation, who have just embraced this new framework and aren't making this decision about privacy versus not privacy. That's not how they're deciding. They're just living their life in a way that in which they're comfortable. And, and they've embraced this idea of transparency. And that sort of pervades how they live their life because they get social capital for living their life transparently. So if transparency is good, how, what, do you, what do we make of this sort of new, you know, Facebook causing angst, you know, the sort of curated self versus authenticity? Like, how do you, how do you have intimacy in, in a world where every, there's cameras everywhere? <coughs> well. I actually think what things like Facebook, so I think Facebook and Twitter primarily are rewiring social capital, right? So before, so it's like, you know, before we would broadcast where we went to school because people would be impressed. Now we don't care. We post photos from Coachella and Burning Man because more people are impressed by that. You'll get more likes. You'll get followers. People will think you're cooler. And that'll reinforce social capital. So as that stuff happens, people are being trained to, to, to behave differently. So I think as a result, intimacy is getting redefined. So what places like Facebook and Twitter, where, look, ostensibly billions of people are spending inordinate amounts of their time every day, are teaching people, right? They're teaching at least 15 to 25 percent of the world's population, and it'll only grow, that um, things that are visual in nature, that are captured, that are memories, that are shared, have extreme amounts of value. And subjective hierarchical definitions don't have value. I think we cannot expect governments to do for us what we could do for ourselves. And collectively, what I think we'll realize is as a society, we are bound by a moral code where we will actually do a lot to help each other. And I think systems and services that enable that will really thrive because people have an inherent sense of wanting to do good for themselves and for others. And I think even though that philosophy is supposed to be embodied by a government, in the execution it utterly fails. And so you just got to walk away. You got to have the courage to walk away. I, I'm just saying these movements will create balance. And I just think that we have to, either, we have to just lean into it, as uncomfortable as it feels. You know, like, look, we've lived, again, in a very traditionally defined world where, like, we believe that governance was defined by a definition of some points on a map. While I live within this tactile border, and so that means I need to behave this way. Mm -hmm. And if I was one degree on the other side, I could behave in a totally different way. And I think what I'm saying is maybe those definitions are now irrelevant, and there are different definitions. And you can see these factions. Anonymous is a complete redefinition of a sense of governance that they believe should exist. 
Occupy Wall Street is a definition. The NSA has a definition. Facebook has a definition. And all of us are choosing to live within some definitions and others. They didn't get elected to be CEO of Facebook. You know, He started that thing. He has a vision for that thing. You can choose whether you believe in that vision or not. You can choose. You can't choose who you're really governed by, whether you did or didn't vote for the guy. And then you can't choose if the guy doesn't do a goddamn thing when he's in office. You can't choose any of that. But you can choose to turn off Facebook. So I suspect, and again, this is kind of like the mind-blowing part of like you take it to the limit, but maybe the way in which we live our lives at the limit in over the next 10 to 20 years is we are forced to decide who, we're, who we have allegiances to in that sense, in that context. Mm. And what's secondary is a definition of I'm a U.S. citizen, a U.S. passport holder. It just may not matter. So I think all these, all these decisions, when you decompose the primary decisions that individuals can, can, can either make or not make, then I think things start to clarify. It'll take time, but I think that's, that's what's going to happen.